if you have ever studied quantum mechanics and found yourself asking the question that what is this whole business about normalizing a wave function well in that case you have come to the right place because today i'm going to talk about what is normalization why you need to normalize a wave function and how you can normalize a wave function in the first place so let's begin so in quantum mechanics the one of the most important equations the foundational pillars of quantum mechanics is the schrodinger's equation this equation basically contains all the information about the nature of motion of the particle like the its position its momentum its energy etc now the solution of this schrodinger's equation is what is known as the wave function solution which is represented by psi x this is known as the wave function solution of the schrodinger's equation now the equation that i have written here is a time independent equation but what i am going to talk about is equally valid for the time dependent equation also now like any other second order differential equation the schrodinger's equation has some interesting properties one of the interesting properties is that if you multiply the wave function solution with a constant then the new function is also going to be a solution of the original differential equation let me give you an example so if i take a very simple example of a second order differential equation like let's suppose d2y upon dx2 plus y is equal to 0. What is the solution of this differential equation? Now, if you solve it, then the solution is going to come out to be y is equal to sine of x. Now, if I multiply this solution with a constant, the new function is also going to be a solution of the differential equation. So, if I say that y is equal to twice of sin x then in this case this is also going to be a solution of the differential equation how you can prove it so if you take the derivative the first order derivative the dy by dx is going to come out to be twice of cos x if you take another derivative then d2y upon dx2 is going to come out to be minus twice of sin x so if you take this to the left hand side so d2y upon dx2 plus twice of sin x what is twice of sin x this is y so plus y is equal to zero i go back to the original differential equation so basically what this means is that if y is equal to sin x is a solution of this differential equation then in that case so is y is equal to twice sin x a solution of the same differential equation y is equal to thrice sin x a solution of the same differential equation y is equal to four times sin x or y is equal to n times sin x where n can be any constant is a solution of this differential equation that means this differential equation basically has infinite solutions in the sense that any one of its solutions can be multiplied by a constant and the new function is also going to be a solution of the original differential equation in the same way Schrodinger's equation is also a second order differential equation which has a solution of psi x so if I multiply psi x with a constant psi c1 let's suppose where c1 is some kind of a constant let's suppose for the time independent Schrodinger's equation c1 is a real constant for the time dependent Schrodinger's equation c1 is a complex constant but whatever it is c1 is some kind of a constant then this new function is also a solution of the original Schrodinger's equation as well as let's suppose if I have another constant c2 so this is also going to be a solution if I have c3 then this is also going to be a solution if I have c4 then this is also going to be a solution if i have c5 this is also going to be a solution of the differential equation so basically c1 psi x c2 psi x c3 psi x c4 psi x c5 psi x on and on and on there are infinite solutions of the schrodinger's equation but not all of these solutions of the schrodinger's equation can be used for a real particle these are all mathematical functions mathematical solutions which are solutions of a mathematical equation but they cannot be used for the actual particle only any one of them can be used for an actual particle now what is it that determines which one of these can actually satisfy the physical interpretation of a particle is given by something else which is known as the bonds interpretation 
the bond statistical interpretation basically gives us an idea how to extract some meaningful information about the nature of the particle from the mathematical solution of the Schrodinger's equation. So Bond's interpretation tells us that if you have uh, the wave function and you multiply it with its complex conjugate, so basically you end up getting modulus square and you integrate this along the x-axis if its motion is restricted to only the x-axis between some two points x is equal to a and x is equal to b then this basically represents the probability of finding the particle in that region so for example if you have uh, some sort of a wave function psi x between uh, uh, in the x-axis between x is equal to a and x is equal to b then the mathematical integration of this wave function between these two regions basically gives us the area under this curve but physically it means that the probability of finding the particle uh, between these two points is P A B now I can talk about what probability means but I'll just give a one a short remark so in Newtonian mechanics that we use in our day-to-day -day lives what is the fundamental equation in Newtonian mechanics the Newton's second law f is equal to m a what is a a is nothing but m d to r upon dt2 so what is r r is nothing but the position vector of this uh, uh, second order Newton's second law solution the second order differential equation so the solution of the Newton's second law basically gives us the position vector which contains all the information about the position of the particle as the particle is moving so the particle where the particle was in the past where the particle is going to be in the future all of this information is contained in the Newton's second law whose solution gives us R T right so Newton's second law solution basically gives us a position of the particle however in the same way that the Newton's second law is the uh, one of the fundamental equations in mechanics one of the fundamental equations in quantum mechanics is the Schrodinger's equation. But the Schrodinger's equation solution is psi x, but psi x does not tell us anything about the particle's position. No. The particle's position can be extracted, but it is not given by psi x. How the particle's position can be extracted from psi x is basically given by the Born's statistical interpretation. So quantum mechanics is different from classical mechanics in the sense that in classical mechanics, we know definitely where the particle is going to be. But in quantum mechanics, we do not know where the particle is going to be. So we cannot tell what is the exact position, but we can tell what is the probability of finding the particle in a given location. So that is what we get from the Born's statistical interpretation that what is the probability that if you make a measurement the particle will be in that location so this is the bond statistical interpretation where uh, the uh, psi x square dx between two locations a and b gives you the probability of finding the particle in that location now i can basically uh, 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 extend this argument to the entirety of the universe that means if i say that uh, 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 the particle uh, uh, has to be found out between the locations of minus infinity and plus infinity all right so that means if the particle's motion is restricted to one dimension so basically i am looking at the entire universe universe so the particle has to be somewhere if not here somewhere else so by definition if the particle exists then the probability of finding the particle between minus infinity and plus infinity should be equal to 1 it cannot be 0 it cannot be less than 1 it cannot be greater than 1 it has to be equal to one this is very important finding the particle between minus infinity and plus infinity has to be equal to one now this is what leads to what we talk about normalization so let's lo look back at our wave function solution so i said that all of these represent uh, viable mathematical solutions but not all of these satisfies the bond statistical interpretation in fact, many of these will not satisfy the Born's statistical interpretation. So if you take any one of these and do a integration between minus infinity and plus infinity, you will get a value which is not equal to 1. Only one out of these infinite possible mathematical solutions will have satisfied the Born's interpretation. That means if I take this particular 
a wave function only and integrate its uh, square between minus infinity to plus infinity that will be equal to 1 and that is the wave function which can be used to represent the physical particle all other wave functions are just mathematical solutions but they cannot be used for any physical particle the, only that wave function can be used for a physical particle whose uh, integration of the square between minus infinity and plus infinity is equal to 1 this is where normalization comes into the picture so whenever you have to theoretically solve the Schrodinger's equation and if you solve it and you come up with some solution let's suppose psi x then that is not the end of the story you also have to normalize this psi x normalization means that you multiply this wave function with some constant so that this also is satisfied if this is not satisfied then the solution cannot represent a physical particle so how do you normalize the wave function so if it is not normalized if it is not normalized in that case if you integrate psi x square between in minus infinity to plus infinity then this is not going to be equal to 1 so we must multiply this with some constant let's suppose c or n whatever it is you want to take so let's suppose i take n all right n is some constant which if i multiply with psi x and then take its square and integrate between minus 1 to plus 1 then this will yield a value of 1 only in that case this particular uh, 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 a wave function is the actual physical wave function that can be used for the physical particle so what does this mean this means that if i take n square out minus infinity to plus infinity psi of x whole square dx is equal to 1 or n is nothing but n square is nothing but 1 upon minus infinity to plus infinity of psi of x whole square dx so this is the normalization constant square i will show you with an example so for example let's suppose that i take the case of a particle in a infinite potential so if there is a infinite potential and there's a particle which is stuck in the infinite potential then i will not discuss the problem at all i'll just give you the solution the solution for this particular case if you solve the Schrodinger's equation comes out to be psi x is equal to sine n pi upon l x where this distance is the length of the square well now if you again with the same way if you multiply this with some constant then all of those new functions are also going to be solutions of the Schrodinger's equation so you will have an infinite number of solutions but we only need one which can realistically represent the part we multiply psi x with n and then we take its square and integrate between minus infinity and plus infinity and this basically leads to 1 if I take n outside then psi x is nothing but sine square and pi x upon l dx is equal to 1 between minus infinity and plus infinity so now the new challenge is to actually solve this integral I will not go into details about the solution of the integral the solution of this integral simply comes out to be l upon 2 okay if you solve this integral you will get l upon 2 so n square multiplied by l upon 2 comes out to be 1 or n comes out to be root over 2 upon l so therefore this original equation that the function that you get as a solution of the Schrodinger's equation needs to be multiplied with this constant so finally we have the uh, uh, wave function solution which can actually be used to represent the particle as n psi x which is 2 upon n sine n pi upon l x so this is a, a wave function solution that can actually represent the particle because this will satisfy this bonds interpretation so as i just now demonstrated not all solutions of the schrodinger's equation uh, can be used to represent the physical particle there is another condition that needs to be satisfied which is basically the bonds interpretation if the bonds interpretation is not satisfied those wave functions cannot be used for actual representation of the physical particle and to make sure that whatever mathematical solution comes from the Schrodinger's equation gives a physical solution we have to multiply with this normalization constant so for all different cases the normalization constant will be different this is only uh, the normal 
normalization constant for a square potential for other potentials you will have, you will have to actually find out what is the normalization constant so that is it uh, you normalize a wave function because you want to only find that wave function solution that can represent the particle physically and discard all other wave function solutions